Shalom, shalom, shalom. Uh, it's Prophet here. Um, welcome. Welcome to the page. Welcome to my humble abode. Um, before I get started, got to give all honor and praise to the Most High, Ahaya, Bahashem, Yeshaya, Wabrawak, uh, and everything that I do, no matter what I'm doing, what I find. If I'm writing, if I'm rapping, if I'm just, you know, reading scripture, if it's fellowship or ministry, no matter what it is, you know, it's all because of him and it's all for him. So this video, I, uh, I, I titled it Open Dialogue, and pretty much that's what it is. I'm basically sharing my thoughts, sharing some uh, insight to me since coming into the truth. And I just thought I'd talk about it, pretty much. Um, if you disagree or if you have thoughts and share and opinions to share, please feel free to comment below. And uh, I'll, read, I'll read them and I'll answer them. Um, if it's something that, um, if it's a question for me and it's a good question, Something that's not done justice by just, you know, writing a quick response back. I may even do an entire video answering that question. <clears throat> but, so pretty much, it's uh, just open dialogue. Um, I'm not going to read scripture. I'm not going to um, push. I'm just going to talk. Uh, so... Since coming into the truth, it's been about two months now. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot in my life has changed. Um, a lot of my family's life has changed. When I say family, I mean my immediate family, my wife, my children. Um, but at the same time, it's so much better. So much better. Um, you get to see. The most high's truth. And that's something that in itself goes without saying. It's amazing. I can't even explain it. But since I've come into the truth, um, there's been a lot of debate, some back and forth, some arguing, if you will, you know. Um, also, there's been some questions. Uh, I've been questioned by family. I've been questioned by friends. I've been questioned by associates. I've been questioned by uh, former brothers and sisters in the faith uh, when I was in Christianity. Um, and I had some... I had some concerns. Well, not even... I won't even say concerns. My main thing is this. When you're talking, having dialogue, or even debating with somebody who has an opposite viewpoint, right? So you're A, they're B. You guys think differently. You know, you have your point, they have their point, and you guys are debating to try to see which point is correct, or you're debating to try to get your individual point across to the other individual. My thing is, the debates I have with Christians is, it's like once I left Christianity, why is it like, is it, is it perceived that I've never been a Christian? Like, I have no, like, as soon as I said, okay, um, I'm no longer a Christian, all of my time in the Word, all of the things I did in the ministry, Everything that I did up until that point just vanished. <laughs> like I had amnesia about Christianity once I left it. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way. My thing is this: when I speak to Christians, I'm not speaking to Christians like, "Hey, you, you mean mean Christian? You? No, it's not like that, bro. Like I was there. I was a Christian. I understand Christianity because I was a Christian." And not for a few seconds, for some years, years, bro. Like, everybody who know me, who knew um, 
my ministry, who knew my dedication, who knew, you know, everything that I did and the man that I used to be way back in the day to the man that I've become. They know I'm genuine. I'm not about games. I'm not about, you know, you know, like false, you know, putting on a front for people being fake. I'm not about that. I give it to you straight all the time, 100%. That's just how I am. And it's like since I have crossed over, so to speak, into the truth, it's like I never was a Christian at all. So I say that because like when I have these debates, particular uh, verses in scripture are used um, as a defense mechanism. And I'm like, you're telling it to me like I don't know the scriptures. You're telling it to me like I've never read it before. Or even used it myself. What what people fail to understand is that I studied the Bible. The Bible was my go-to. You know, everybody has their positives, their strengths, and their weaknesses, right? Well, Scripture was my strength. Whenever I had a problem, whenever I had a question, whenever whenever I was feeling some way, I turned to Scripture first before I did anything else. Scripture was my you know first love, so to speak, if you want to talk about it like. You know, like that, being in the faith. You know what I'm saying? So, this book, I know this book. I may not know it, you know, verse verse for verse and be able to quote all these different scriptures at the top of my head. But I read it. I read this book right here in its entirety. Okay. I've read the Gospels, which is the go-to for Christians, multiple times. I spend most of my time in the Gospels, actually. Um, But, like, I I know this word. So, don't look at me like an enemy. Look at me as somebody who's been in your shoes. And I was able to come out of the darkness and into the light. Rather than, you know, look at me like, oh, my God, he's attacking everything that I believe in. I'm not trying to do that because I felt like, I felt like that before, okay? When the truth came to me, I didn't say, Give me the truth. Oh, break it in. Oh, yes. Mm. No, nah, bro. No. It was hard, man. It was hard. It was so hard. I questioned everything. I did a ton of research. I got back in that book for and, and looked at it with new eyes. And I feel, personally, that people don't do that. They don't look at scripture with new eyes. Um... They look at it with their Christian lenses. You know, like they take a piece of, uh, take some glasses, right? Take the glasses and they put them on. And they can only see scripture through the eyes in which they've been taught. So no matter how you read it, what you read, you can go to any verse in the Bible. You're going to read it, you know, according to how you've been taught to read. And so that brings me to one of the things I wanted to address. Uh, how many people in their family have that old head? That old head that like is just stuck in their ways, and nothing you can do, nothing you can say, you know, can change their mind, their opinion, their behavior for anything. For some folks, it's a grandma, a grandpa, a great auntie, a great uncle. Shoot, for some of them, it's parents. Like me, for example, you know, my father had me at a at a, a older age, you know. So growing up with him, you know, you you see, you know, different um, things. He was old school, and wasn't nothing I could say change him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like he went through the whole phase of you know getting cell phones and trying to learn how to text and. I don't know how to hit this button. He gets frustrated. It was hilarious. But, you know, they didn't come from our generation. They don't understand that. But uh, that's kind of like a positive example of, you know, being stuck in your ways. A negative example is like deeply, deeply um, rooted racism, right? You know, you go back to people who just hate you. Just hate you. And it's a part of their culture. It's a part of their life. It's a part of their upbringing. They don't know how to change. Okay? Using that for for example. 
we're going to go back to that. But that's how I view Christianity in a way, okay? And what I mean by that is we're raised, right? We're raised in a home that has been taught to believe something to be true. When you're raised in an environment where the conclusion has already been established, very, 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 very seldomly do you ever question that conclusion. That conclusion becomes law. It becomes what just is. And nobody questions it. Nobody looks beyond it. Nobody looks around it. Uh, nobody looks to see what makes it work, what makes it tick, so to speak, right? And then you have the very few people that do. They try to think outside the box, okay? Everybody's in this bubble and they're just off on their lonesome over here, right? But those guys are looked at like outcasts. Those people are, you know, ostracized and cast cast out. They're the black sheep. Or those people crazy. They don't know what they're talking about. Or, yo, you're a conspiracy theorist. Or, bro, I don't know what's wrong with you. Like, I'm going to pray for you. <clears throat> but if you never question the truth or what you know to be the truth, if you never question what's been already established as the law at that time, how could you ever truly know what, it, what the truth is? All right? That's like, let's say... I move my family to a faraway island, right? That no, like where there's no other people. They don't live. It's uninhabited. Raise my kids. I come up with this notion, right? That you know, uh, there's you know like this big monkey man, and monkey man made the trees and the grass, right? I teach my kids this. This is all they know. And then they have kids and they raise their kids, teaching their kids the same thing that I taught them. There's this big monkey man and he made the, the trees and the grass. The monkey man becomes the, the norm. The monkey man becomes the law. Nobody will question it. Nobody will ask about it. It'll become the norm until somebody does. And when they do, they're going to be you know, looked at differently. You see what I'm trying to say? If you've been raised in a Christian home, that means you've been raised by Christians. And chances are those Christians that raised you were raised by Christians. You know, maybe they have been associated with the church. Maybe their parents have just been, you know, you know, teaching them from, you know, yay high all the way up to when they're grown. But if you're never if you're never given the truth, what is your truth? Have you ever questioned it? Did you look into it? Did you do your research? No. Probably not. You know. Um, scripture says the blind leads the blind, and they all go into a ditch. That makes so much sense to me, even more. Even more sense to me now that I'm in the truth. Okay. Um, have you ever, like, do you do you ever question things in your life? Or do you just accept it as, as law, accept it as truth? Um, for my sports fans, right? You were probably raised, if you're in this generation, you were probably raised to know that Michael Jordan was the best basketball player ever. Ever. So just by being told that Michael Jordan was the best, the GOAT ever, right? Hearing it so much, it being told, told to you, it becomes your norm. It becomes like what you believe to be true. Now, I come from Chicago. <laughs> so my opinion may be slightly biased. But... For someone who's been raised to know that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player to ever 
touch a touch touch a ball to ever step foot on the court, right? Have you ever watched him play? Have you ever watched one of his old games playing on ESPN or watching on YouTube? Seen any of his highlights? Looked at his stats? Seen the things that he had to overcome as a player? See the things that you know uh, had to happen in order for him to get to his prime? Uh, the how he worked on his game, his work ethic, all of those different things. Did you see how the league was at that time? How it wasn't like, oh foul. Oh, foul. I look at you wrong. Foul. Everybody want to be friends and join on the same team. It wasn't no competition. Uh, All of these different things. Did you look into any of that? Or did you just say, oh, yeah, my dad told me that Mike was the best, so he's the best. And you may have your favorite basketball player that plays currently, but if anybody tries to debate that Michael Jordan debate, majority of people don't rock with it. Now you got your LeBron lovers now. That's coming up in the LeBron era because LeBron has been playing for 15 plus years. I think it's about 15 or 16 years now. Those, you know, you might have a LeBron Mike debate. But for the most part, what I'm saying is people believe what they've been taught. If you've been taught Christianity, you believe it and you believe in it wholeheartedly. And that is all you know. And it's the, that's the truth. And you don't want to hear nothing else. But have you done your research? Because if you've been taught Christianity, you're going to look at the Bible as a Christian. The Bible talks about nothing about Christianity until way deep in the New Testament. So what? Let's see. This book is really thick right here. You probably don't get Christian until you get about in that part right there. Roughly. So what was all of this? I'm just saying. I've always been the type to ask questions, and I've always been the type to not settle for what's been told to me is true. And I look, I search, even when I was a Christian, like I said it in one of my songs, even when I was a Christian, I was arguing with Christians. Because that's the truth. I never settle for just what's been told to me. Like, I have to find out for myself. I seek knowledge and understand, and I seek truth. More people need to look beyond the veil. You you wake up, you're in this room, and you think that, you know, the walls are all you know. Little do you know, that's a set. And those walls can be pushed down. And once you push those walls down, and that set opens up, and you see the real world, your mind, it takes your, it takes your mind to a whole nother level. I'm not here to debate doctrines and stuff like that. If you've seen my videos, if you've heard my music, if you've seen the topics I bring about, you understand the differences that I have with Christianity. You understand why. If not, then you can ask me and I'll tell you. So this isn't my, this isn't my um, platform to just talk about you know what I dislike about Christianity. But I truly, I truly want to understand. And, I, and so I want to approach it in a way of open dialogue, you know. I've been a Christian. I understand the lenses that you look through. I've been in a situation where I've been taught since I was, since I was born, my family has been Christians. They've gone to church. Now, my immediate family for a long time didn't attend church, but I was drugged to church by aunties grandmas, you know, different things like that. And then when I became of age, I naturally went to Christianity because that's what I knew my whole life. You know, that's the God I knew. That's the Jesus that I knew. So that's what I sought to seek out. I didn't know anything else. I didn't know any better. But I didn't settle. And I didn't put blinders on my eyes. With the intention to never take them, you know, never take them off. I just ask that people be more open. Do your own research. Not only in scripture, not only in your own opinion. Take your personal feelings out of the matter. Do your research. Look in the history books. What does history tell you? You know, as a Christian, we celebrate what y'all said. I said we, I'm sorry, but 
you know, as a Christian, it's, it's Christmas is celebrated. Birthdays are celebrated. Easter is celebrated. A lot of the man-made holidays are celebrated. You know, the law isn't kept. It's not held in any regard. It's mentioned, it's, you know, it's noted. Okay, the law, okay, whatever. But it's not, you know, it's not held in any kind of regard when it's one of the most important things we should be doing. You know, we read what we want to read with our Christian lenses. So we read, you know, the ministry of Paul and the things that he says. And we take that as if we're free from the law, which is not the truth. You know, we look at things that benefit us, that, you know, that come after us. But I just wish y'all can open your eyes and hear. I hope I spoke some understanding to some people. Sorry about that. <laughs> my phone ran out of space, so I had to I had to send my first part of the video over to my SD card and save some space on my phone so I could go back and record. But uh, basically, all I'm saying is I understand. Listen, I understand. I truly understand how hearing something that goes against everything you've been taught goes against your monkey man, you know, how it can be hard to deal with. But when you hear it, don't just rebuke it as nonsense. Do your research, look into it, and if through your research and what you look into, gives you knowledge and understanding about that and you can honestly say that that is nonsense then you rebuke it as such absolutely but don't just automatically because it doesn't agree with what you believe in or it doesn't agree with what you know to be true you may go to somebody else and you're talking about your monkey man <laughs> and look at monkey man well, where you come from you living in the box and you might take offense to that but they literally aren't trying to be hurtful they're like le trying to legitimately understand you know <laughs> what you're saying and what you believe so i understand um i truly understand i i came from christianity i came from the same you know areas as some of you i came from the same doctrine as some of you i came from the same denomination as some of you some some of you those who who even have a, you know, Church of God in Christ background, Kojic. I came from that. That's why I started. Um, I understand. I understand how you read the Bible because I read it that way. I understand the laws and doctrines that you hold sacred because I held them sacred. I understand that the disagreements that you have with me now because when I first had, when I first heard it, I had those questions too. I didn't have those disagreements. Cause I don't automatically I don't rule things out as heresy until I do my due diligence. But I just ask that you guys take the blinders off, take your feelings, and sit them on the shelf, and take what you feel and your your mental capacity, right? And just just sit it off to the side. Look at the scripture with new eyes, not through Christian lenses. And then you can come to a truth now whether that's the truth where you end up agreeing or it's a truth where you end up disagreeing but give it that respect and not just in terms of the hebrew israelites i'm talking about anything in life you never know you know you, you just there's so much in this world and the world is so much bigger than you you never know what's what's true and what's not true until you look into it. That's just plain and simple. Um, for my fellow Christians who take offense to the things I say and how I come off, what I say isn't meant to insult. What I say is meant to acknowledge, bring light to a to a to a to a concern and to a problem and an issue in our society. Our society as what's was being labeled as black people, African American people, as well as our society as a people in whole. It's a problem. And if we don't say nothing about it, we don't speak up, it's gonna continue to be a problem. So 
my st- my my words aren't aren't meant to cut deep unless it's at understanding. Um truly like I believe that there's so many Christians that truly have a heart for the truth. They've just been told falsely and they don't know no better. You know? But um you guys are my brothers and sisters. I love you guys. And I hope that everyone makes it into the kingdom. But in order to do that, things have to be in place. You have to follow the laws and commandments. Yes, all the laws and the commandments. You have to believe in Christ. Shia. You have to believe in the higher. You have to give away, get away from all of these pagan holidays and rituals. You have to worship him in spirit and in truth. We got to get away from this mentality of, oh, we can do what we want to do, sin and, you know, live our lives according to how we want because we don't like to be held accountable for anything. But at the same time, in our back of our minds, we're like, it's okay because all we have to do at the end of the day is just go and say sorry and say we repent and we don't really understand what, what repent means. Repent doesn't mean to apologize. Repent means to acknowledge the sin that's taking place, to make recompense, and then to turn away from and leave. So if I come up to you and I have a problem with fighting and I punch you in the face, for me to repent, it's not to say, hey, I'm sorry for punching you in the face. For me to repent, truly repent, is to me to come to you, acknowledge, yes, I punched you in the face, I caused you harm. I have an issue with causing people harm, with putting my hands on people, for punching people in the face. You acknowledge it. Then you say, I'm sorry for punching you in the face. Right? And then you never punch a person in the face again. Not just say, oh, okay. My bad, bro. I didn't mean to hit you in the face. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. And then... Two, three days later, you hit somebody else. So you hit the same person. It doesn't work like that. (laughs) It just doesn't work like that. But let me get off my soapbox. I pray this has brought some knowledge and some understanding to some people. For those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Um, This is profit and this is open dialogue. Like I said, if you have questions, if you have conversation pieces if you have disagreements send them put them down in the likes i mean in the comments below we can have a discussion if you have my contact information hit me up we can always discuss i do not mind having a discussion a civil discussion that's completely fine with me but until then you guys have a happy sabbath and shalom